least favourite Bucks jersey is undoubtedly the Black Fear of the Deer. It's not even close. To me, this is the part of the book's rebranding that I think is most telling. Because this jersey is kind of, it's fine. I think its biggest problem is that it could be a jersey for literally any team in the NBA. The Irish Rainbow is the only thing on it that, again, ties to the books and the books visual identity over the years but this is just a black jersey with a ridiculously oversized logo in the middle of it that because of the logo's shape leads to this bizarre placement of the number this is an immensely popular jersey a jersey that a lot of people really liked a jersey that is still current right and to me, it is just so bland. The only thing more bland than this jersey is the court they designed to go with it. It is not the books. It is it is just plain black with this giant logo that has only recently become the books logo. It is nothing to do with the city or the franchise. We obviously have seen variations of this too. Um, obviously, the cream jersey. And I guess what's now the new version of this, which is just the cream jersey remade in black. <laughs> the one thing I'll say about the cream jersey is not a great jersey. Didn't think it looked as good as maybe, possibly it could have in some way. At least the cream had some intentionality. Black is just like, you're out of ideas. It's okay, we need a third jersey. I guess we make it black. I mean, if you're not a team where black is one of either your primary or secondary color, that's in all sports what tends to happen is, you know, you can go, okay, we need another jersey. Let's make a black jersey, I guess. And black is cool and people like to wear black. And it might be, this might be one of the more wearable books jerseys in kind of an everyday context. But in terms of what the players wear in the court and what what the books are supposed to look like or what's that supposed to mean, this to me is by far the worst. It just... It seems so much of the time. It seems so much of the same kind of style that you could go to any kind of sports clothing store anywhere on the planet and find things that vaguely kind of align with these design principles. And this is just kind of transported to a jersey with a giant Jägermeister logo slapped in the middle of it. And it's like, oh, here it is. Fear the deer. It's not great, guys. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, um the the other the other jersey or jerseys and kind of uniform sets more appropriately that I want to talk about is really the now much beloved purples. And I say purple kind tread of loosely. lightly. Tread lightly. Jordan, I'm go, jumping go, in with go jumping for it, in with two big feet. Two big feet, right? There's totally an explanation for this and you should have at it. I just I don't see the point. I understand it was a trend at the time, but I don't see the point. Um, what this has to do with the books and what they were to that point, this is change for change's sake, and this is a shock value change. And I will have to bow to the wisdom of others. I do not feel like this would have been the most widely beloved jersey at the time. I do I'm a, I'm open to correction if people could find me the evidence to say everyone loved this jersey. People around the league are in. Look at the most stylish team in the NBA. These purple books. Okay, if that's the case, I'll hold my hands up. I think the thing that has happened over the years is really interesting with this jersey. Um, and when I say with this jersey, that's even that's tough to untangle because we've got a couple things going on. Okay, we've got the playing kind of sets where... You have white with purple as kind of a secondary color. You've got the full purple roads. And then I think the one that people most frequently talk about, which is really green, but with the purple accents in the book, which is the alternate uniform of the late 90s, three, four seasons, the end of the 90s. Like, I think there was an original element of this. This is just my theory. This is me being a wild conspiracy theorist, not something I usually do, but maybe this is the right place to come and do that. I think these became kind of ironically appreciated by books fans because it summed up just what the books had become as an organization. 
and through all the down years, through all those points, it was just like, yeah, look, we're the Bucks. We have purple jerseys. We have a, a purple deer because why not? And now we're in kind of a post-irony world where that is lost and there is an element of nostalgia for a lot of people. And it's kind of like, these are great. I do think the alternate uniform is fun. Like, I, I have t-shirts that have that purple book on it. I, I don't think that's a bad jersey by any means, but I think it's important to acknowledge that it's just kind of a a random stunt that doesn't do anything in terms of the brand identity. I think it's okay for people to like it and to like it for a lot of different reasons. And key to this is, this is one of the few junctures in two decades where the books became good again. So people yeah. did get to watch a books team that was good play in a purple jersey. That then holds something. It kind of holds something that would seem instructive if they've just stuck with white, red, and green all along. But I think there's a whole lot more that kind of gets brought up in how that is perceived now in hindsight that to me just isn't reflective of that jersey and i think the best way of putting it is i don't think it's anywhere near as good a jersey as the raptors purple the famous vince carter tracy mcgrady raptors purple with the raptor on it which i just think is a better designed jersey it's so much cleaner but it's also coherent it's like <laughs> what what is the purple coming in i mean we can joke about the barney jerseys but we can we can also understand why that is a factor in their identity and how it came in. I just think it tied together much more neatly. I'm not saying these are the worst jerseys, but if we're to kind of take a kind of take a, a zoom out view of what has the book's uniform history been, what is the book's visual identity, it's it's impossible not to get to this stage and be like, what is going on? Why? I mean, and why do this and then pivot away and be like we're never going back there, which is very clearly the organizational line now. Mr. Tresky, your rebuttal. Um, to the purple or just my least favorite? Uh, either way. To the purple, but either way. Either way. I think it's hard for me not to... Uh, this is the boring answer to the purple era. Mike Dunleavy. All roads back. All roads lead back to Mike Dunleavy. Um, I just associate that's when the Bucks were first good in my lifetime, so I just associate with uh, that color scheme palette, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. with my growing up Bucks era, just seeing Ray Allen and Sam Cassell, that team. Basically just that year. Uh, everything else is not that good <laughs> to right. begin with, but um, yeah, that's boring. But I would probably go with the rebranding that followed the purple era which is i i can't go for anything with the green and red the late 2000s green and red because i just think it's like adam said it's if you try to <clears throat> recapture the glory of buck's past uh you know try to spark this kind of i guess uh revitalization that never came during that era they it was just so bland and i just think that was when like if you go back to like highlights and clips of that time that's when like the worst of the nba is like it's really just shiny jerseys really like yes. the tj ford picture of him like looking like he's wearing pants but it's actually shorts um yeah. it's just like overly baggy and just like incredibly shiny and it's like this doesn't work it's just a, it's such a weird kind of time for the league in general there was a time um, when the the armholes also just uh there was a couple iversons where they basically they cut them like they were cut off t-shirts and yeah. so the, ar the armholes weren't tapered at all it was just kind of like a, yeah i i hated all that it's it doesn't it basically like that plays just like a little part in just like how i guess unrealized what that attempt was because like I think what's interesting is like when you look at the Bucks of what, especially the first year when the new ownership came in, they like altered the B and the S where it's like basically just like an even like word mark. Cause originally it was like the, the B and the S are like really high. And then the UCK is like in the middle and just kind of like smaller. Yeah. Those Appropriately. The, the Oak was yeah, made to the, stand out more. <laughs> 
the irony is I lost. But those ones, and I think just like that, because that was also the first Mecha floor, right? They changed it to have the M's. Oh, Mike, yeah. This, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. They, like, that, like, is interesting. Like, it kind of works well. And then, obviously, they rebranded the team, you know, all around. But that, like, if it was something like that towards, like, how the whole, I guess, I guess nine seasons, ten seasons, or however long it was. Like, it was if it was something like that for, like, the whole duration of it, like, I think I would probably would have been more receptive to it. And also, the, that those teams outside of, like, the Fear of the Deer year and the first Chase of Kid year were pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, also, with the with that version of Green and Red, I mean, what's the clear biggest problem? And what if you look at all of the books jerseys again in context and say, okay, well, what went wrong here? Both the green and the red are the wrong tone. Like, they're yes. the wrong shades of green yes. and red. Like, if you're bringing back green and red, bring back the green and red that were successful. And I, I think t- to the, the credit of the current rebrand, one of the most important changes was that the green went back to a green that was much closer to what had been books colors for the first 25 years of the franchise's existence. It's that kind of... The red, I mean, the red is, I think, the biggest problem of it. I think that shows up when you think of the all-red alternate uniform they had at that time. Mm-hmm. But the green is also this strange kind of soft, sheeny green that is both dark and also light. I don't, I don't quite know how they managed to achieve that particular color of green. I, it is the most Christmas of them all. Like this is the obviously the pejorative that has been thrown at books jerseys when they were green and red. It's oh the Christmas jerseys. They are the set that the combination of the colors looks like you know Christmas colors. The others are still green and red, but you don't immediately kind of go oh what what's with the weird Christmas jersey? So I think like the the word mark the typeface is obviously pretty bad. Um, for for those mid two thousands into twenty tens jerseys, but the shades of green and red is an even bigger problem that probably leads to the point where the new owners come in and the rebrand gets on their way, and it's like okay, we got to do something more drastic again, and we've got to ditch the red. That was more about the red that was there at the time than it was about how red could work with books jerseys overall. It was almost like the the word mark was supposed to be cut out of diamond or or something like it had these kind of beveled facets to it and kind of a, 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 don't know how to describe it kind of a shading it just just a real I mean you you can see I mean it's you can see the evolution of the kind of Terry Cummings bucks to the purple bucks to and it just seemed like the the 2006 whenever that was the bogut the bogut bucks was supposed to be a variation of that kind I guess, but yeah, it just, it, it, it's a terrible idea in, in both the, the execution, but just the idea. I also don't like the kind of piping stripes that kind of run up and down, like kind of almost like, like overall straps or something that kind of runs along the entire length of it. But I, I don't think anybody really liked those at the time. It was, it was really shocking that they went back to the red and green. Um, what is your general, I mean, Adam's spoken to this a little bit, but, uh, for both of you, what's your general design philosophy as far as uniforms, jerseys, uh, soccer kit? I, I didn't speak, I, I don't know anything about soccer. I'm not a soccer fan. So I don't, I obviously, I, I, I think I'm vaguely aware that those change all the time, but what, what is your kind of general design philosophy? What would you like? What's your idea of kind of a perfect, a perfect look for a sports team? I mean, <laughs> It's maybe too simple, but I think you create your identity when you start and your ups and downs. That's part of what it is. This is part of, you know, the uniform being the only thing that is a constant about your team, unless you're one of these teams or it's not. And it's just as changeable as everything else. And I mean, to speak to soccer, I think it's particularly apparent in soccer and you get a lot of backlash when, say, uh, Juventus, for example, Juventus have famously throughout their career one of the most successful clubs in europe the most successful club in italy or very close to that they have always been a black and white striped team and 
just kind of out of boredom, it seems like manufacturers and Adidas in this case this year have come and said, we're going to get rid of the stripes that, you know, are iconic, that that's what your entire brand is. And we're going to kind of make it black and white checkered blocks. And it's something like that to me where, OK, you could say that's it's still black and white. It's still what it is. But it's not because people have grown up on the legend of a certain team looking a certain way. They've grown up supporting that team, wearing jerseys that are a certain way. I mean, in soccer, you've long had sponsors on jerseys. So kind of those ad patches constantly change. Um, Kit manufacturers constantly change. But the color is at a general kind of ethos of the team traditionally stayed the same. But I think what has happened increasingly in soccer is just the sheer commercial benefits of let's make as many new jerseys a year and let's change them as frequently as possible has come in. And I think we've now reached that point in the NBA since the, since the Nike deal kicked back in where each team has like four to five jerseys a year where you end up getting alternates that really don't have anything to do with anything. And it's just like, okay, well, what color have we not used before that we could use here to maybe sell some more jerseys? So, I mean, I'd consider myself a uniform traditionalist is probably the best way to put it. And I, it's, I, I don't know who would dispute it, but I, I don't think it's a coincidence that the, when you think of NBA jerseys, it is the Celtics, Lakers, Bulls. These are the kind of jerseys you think of. Like there is a reason it's because their entire history is kind of tied up in what those jerseys look like. And if you're going to see a Lakers clip, you're going to see a Celtics clip. You're going to see a Bulls clip. It doesn't matter what area you're seeing it from you know straight away there's one thing that's going to be consistent. Yeah. And I just, I just think that really matters. I think it can be underestimated in trying to build a brand that people care about and a brand that becomes cool. The books are at a point now where there is no reason why they shouldn't be, you know, ultra cool. Their, their sales would suggest that. I mean, they've got the MVP. That's going to sell a lot of jerseys. They're also a really good team. If ever there was a time where, you know, green white and red for example could be made into an iconic ultra popular color scheme for the books it would be now if you were still going with that with a better version something reminiscent of their original now is the time where you could probably re-establish that and have it be something that for decades to come you don't have this constant crisis of identity um My this fellow. is such a this is Come such on, Jordan. A, insight. This is such a treat for me to be a part of the classic <laughs> Tresky Hedge. It's not I don't know what I don't know I don't have a philosophy. I I like what I like. Jordan, Jordan. Come on, you have a you have a philosophy. What? I'm I don't know. You have it though. Of course you have it. You're you watch basketball. You I know there are jerseys that you see and you're like, that's an awful jersey. We talk about these things from time to time. So what is it for you that when you see that, it's like, do you prefer a clean jersey? Like, I I prefer clean jerseys. You can do the right kind of stunt jersey where it works out. For example, um, you know, they when the Nuggets had the kind of throwback version, the yellow and blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That the was, was their alternate. Like, I think that's awesome because it's, it's your alternate, but it's also tied to something historical. You're putting a modern tweak on it. I think that's where you can play around and get yes, kind of weird with it. Absolutely. And I said at the time, I said at the time last year, I'm like, okay, so give us the Ray Allen bucks. If you just have to have a black, if your analytics internally has said that we're going to sell black jerseys or you just have the proclivity that you just want a black jersey, then give us the Ray Allen purple and make it black and silver. Like, give us a word, like, do something, mm. like, remix it, do some version of this if, if they're going to do it. But they, they seem, they seem to just want all the colors. They want, they want, they want all the, and it's like, okay, so make a rainbow jersey. I don't know, but like. Can we talk about actually, I know you are very strongly against the blue that is a feature in these jerseys. But why have they got the blue if they just kind of refuse to make a blue jersey? This is the most puzzling thing with the blue, is if you're going to have this as some kind of tangential part of your identity, why are you making all of these other jerseys and not making a blue jersey? It's You've, you've made it part of your visual identity, you've got to use it. <laughs>